So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome, on behalf of State Bank of India, friends from media from Kolkata as well as Mumbai, to this press conference on the occasion of declaration of annual financial result of our bank for the financial year 2016-17. I also welcome the guests and our colleague watching the event in social media and through webcast. On the dais is our chairman, Simati Arundhati Bhattacharya. Seated right to chairman is Sri B. Shriram, managing director, corporate banking group. Seated left to chairman is Sri Rajneesh Kumar, managing director, national banking group. To the right of Sri B. Shriram is managing director, compliance and risk, Sri Praveen Kumar Gupta. To the left of Sri Rajneesh Kumar is Sri Dinesh Kumar Khada, Managing Director, Associate and Subsidiaries. Seated on the right of Sri Praveen Kumar Gupta is our DMD and Chief Financial Officer, Srimati Anshula Kant. Seated in the front row, our DMDs of the bank. Now the sequence of event for this press conference will be as follows. Our chairman will begin with opening remarks. Thereafter, DMD and chief financial officer will make a presentation. Question and answer session will follow that. Question and answer session will be open to both Kolkata and Mumbai media. We shall alternate between the two centers. Now, I would like to request our chairman to set the tone for the conference with the opening remarks. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you all of you for taking the time out to attend this press conference. Uh, we have just been through a very difficult but still a very satisfying quarter. And uh, of course, one of the biggest things that was done during this quarter, or rather immediately after this quarter, was the merger of the associate banks. Uh, it is a seven-way merger where SBI has merged now with uh, the five of its associate banks and the Bharatiya Mahila Bank. Uh, something I don't think that has been uh, attempted anywhere in the globe at all. Now, as a result of this merger, SBI today is one of the top 50 global banks, and it is currently about four times the size of its nearest competitor in the Indian market. Not only that, today, globally, we have the second largest physical footprint with more than 24,000 branches, 59,000 ATMs, 56,000 BCs, and a very large number of POS machines. So if you consider the physical infrastructure as well, today we are the second largest in the entire globe. Having said that, you know, a lot of people would tell you that the physical infrastructure is now not so important. We ourselves feel that in India, it is still something that's of importance because we still have in India a large population that is above 45, that is a population that is more, uh, more at ease uh, working in a brick and mortar structure. Not only that, we also have a very large percentage of population who don't have access to digital medium or are less comfortable with it. So to that extent, this is something that is still important in a country like India. Having said that, it is not as though our presence in the digital space is any less. SBI Online is the fifth most visited financial site 
globally. So to that extent, even in the online space, we have a very huge presence. We continue to remain in India market leaders in the popular segments of home and auto, segments where we believe that we still have a lot of growth to come, and therefore we remain very much a leader in this, these segments. Now, over and above all of this, there is one other thing that I thought we would talk about, and that is, for the first time, SBI this time has also come out with what is called the sustainability report based on international GRI standards. The reason for doing this is because we feel that we have been around for more than 210 years, not by luck, but by design, because we follow very strong and very deep-rooted sustainable practices, and that is the reason why this time SBI has also come out with a sustainability report. Also, for the first time in a PSB, this time we have appointed a chief ethics officer because we believe that it is important for the people who are joining the bank to be told exactly how we expect them to behave. And to that end, to ensure that there is a culture which respects ethics from the very beginning, we have also brought or created this position in order to create that kind of a culture within the bank. In the results of the bank that will be just discussed by the CFO, I can tell you that the bank on a solo basis has done very well in spite of having a very difficult quarter. In respect of the merger of the associates, we have ensured that we have taken the maximum amount of pain so that going forward, we can give much better, better results. And towards that end, their entire corporate book has been fully aligned. The actuarial, wherever there were any requirements, that has been completely uh, provided for. Not only that, even the VRS expenses that will come only during this quarter, to the extent of 75% of the estimated expenses, they are already provided for. So going forward, I do not believe that we will need anything more than 100 or 200 crores in order to take care of these expenses. With that, the basic expenses of the merger will be behind us. Now with that, coming forward, or rather going forward from the next quarter, we intend to start with a clean slate. If you look at the business mix of the associates, 43% of their business was with corporates, but they had 57% of retail in their business mix. As you can understand, this is one area of huge strength, and this is a strength that will now be with SBI as it goes forwards in its journey with its extended footprint. So with that, I will now hand it over to the CFO to give you the solo results. In fact, this is the last time that you will be hearing the solo results of SBI. So in a way, this is a historic moment when we do the last solo results of this 210-year-old bank. So uh, she will give you the, the numbers, and thereafter we will be uh, at your disposal for taking any questions that you may have. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, the presentation is running. Okay. So we'll start with a very strong deposit franchise that the bank continues to enjoy. And as you can see that the deposits have gone up by 18.14% year on year, while the CASA ratio has gone up by 174 basis point to 45.58%. Uh, two things I want to highlight here that during the year we have opened 3.67 crore saving bank accounts and we have also opened 22 lakh current accounts during the year. Uh, our loan growth has been at 7.80% and as was shown in the previous slide also, uh, our market share in deposits has gone up by 38 basis point and on the advances side, the market share has gone up by 65 basis point. So on both deposit and advances, we've had significant increase in market share. Um, the, out of the total loan growth of 7.8, as you can see, around 2.16% has come from corporate. Retail has grown very strongly at 21.18%, and 
and now it constitutes about 30% of our domestic loan book. SME has been uh, uh, little muted growth at 3.41%, agri at 7.45% and foreign offices at 7.27%. Much of the retail growth has been driven by growth in home loans and auto loans. Today, home loans constitute 55% of the total retail book and the growth is at 16.82%. Auto loans, the growth is at 21.24%. And as you can see at the bottom of the slide, market share in both these very, very fiercely competitive areas, we have gained market share in both of them, significant market share. The next slide gives the operating income uh, snapshot. Interest income in quarter four has gone up by 10.36%. Expenses have gone up only by 6.47% as a result of which NII has gone up by 17.33%. Other income shows a marginal decline of 2.43%, primarily because last year in this time we had some repatriation of surplus profits from overseas which this year we have not been able to take. So that is why, the, that is the reason there is a negative growth. Otherwise, all other subheads of other income have grown very strong positive growth. And below the uh, charts, we have given the financial year growth. Interest income is up by 7% for the full year. Interest expenses 6.42%. NII 8.16%. And other income growth is at 27.35%. Operating expenses have been moderate at 4.89%, driven by a negative growth in staff expenses, primarily because of very significant retirements. And the recruit, new recruits who have joined, they join at the lowest end of the scale, and they have come in more mainly towards the end of the year. Overhead shows a very uh, you know, significant increase of 26% uh, in the quarter. This is because we have taken the depreciation on revaluation of fixed assets for the whole year in the P&L in the fourth quarter. So that is why this unusual gain is there in fourth quarter. Overall overheads have grown by 19.89% for the full year as can be seen in the table below. As a result of this very strong performance, operating performance both on the income side and the cost side, our expense ratio has declined by 138 basis point to 47.75% in March 17. Even sequentially, although this number is not given here, it has come down by almost 170 basis point from December. After I think it is quite some time, it has gone below 48 our expense ratio. Uh, the operating performance in the next chart it is very consistent, operating profit is up by 13%. Provisions have also gone up by 4.59%. As a result, net profit year on year has gone up in the quarter by 123%. For the full year, the net profit is up by 5.36% at 10,484 crores. Uh, this is the snapshot for our yield on advances and cost of deposit. While both yield on advances and cost of deposits have come down significantly, the impact on the spread, which is the difference between the two, is not that much. It is only 15 basis point. And uh, the reason for that is uh, twofold. One, of course, we've had a very strong CASA growth and deposit growth uh, that has helped us to contain interest expenses. And the yield on advances has declined mainly because of the reduction, significant reduction we have done in the MCLR and base rate over the time, over the period. Uh, for the same reason, our net interest margin is also declined to 3.11 from 3.27. This is on the domestic side, and overall NIM has come down from 2.96 to 2.84 year on year. In fact, during the fourth quarter, there is a slight uptick from the December number. As you can see from this slide, we remain very well capitalized. Our capital adequacy ratio is at 13.11%, of which tier one is as high as 10.35%. Uh, the main contributors are 8,379 crores of retained earnings. Uh, we've had government infusion of capital of 5,681. 
We have also realized non -core, from non-core assets and strategic investments during the year we have re realized 2,662 crores. And in FY17, we also were able to raise 81 capital of 9,100 crores. So as you can see, the raising of capital or sources of capital are very diversified and very strong. Uh, the movement of NPAs, I think this is the best uh, story, the best uh, slide which I am presenting to you today. Before you look at the top uh, half of the slide, I'll request you to look at the bottom half of the slide, where we give the PCR coverage, provision coverage ratio, which has gone up from 60.69% last year to 65.95%. This shows how much provisions we have made to increase the coverage. It has gone up by more than 5%. Uh, similarly, if you see our net NPA ratio has come down to 3.71%. From last year also it is down from 3.81 and sequentially it is down from 4.24%. Overall, the slippage ratio is at 2.59%. And during the quarter, fourth quarter, the slippage ratio has come down by 10 basis points from the third quarter at 2.60%. We have been able to contain our overall slippages to below 40,000 crores during the full year. Uh, the next slide gives the movement of cash to digital. Uh, Chairman had also briefly mentioned in our opening remarks. We continue to remain very focused in these areas. And as you can see from this chart, that 77% of our transactions don't go through the branches. Uh, only 23% of our transactions are in the branches. And if you look at the table below, this is the, uh, and the right column, that is the very interesting uh, uh, data point, which actually gives you the strength of our digital franchise, where we are giving the market share. Uh, if you don't see the number of, forget the number of group ATMs, but if you see the value of transactions that go through our ATMs, 38.84 of the system transactions, that percentage comes to us. We have more than 40% of the debit cards. Number of mobile banking transactions, the market share is close to 25%. Value of transactions in mobile banking, the market share is 44%, more than 44%. And number of POS terminals is the market share is more than 20%. So all round in digital, I think we are extremely the most dominant player in the market clearly. And from the digital, if you come to the financial inclusion, there too our dominance is very clear. We have opened at least 25% of the uh, Jantan accounts that have been opened in the system. Today we have a total of 11.73 crore financial inclusion accounts. We have CASA deposits of more than 15,000 crores in these accounts. And today, only 29% of these accounts are zero balance accounts. And as Chairman mentioned, uh, you know, on the Facebook, we have the highest number of followers across all banks in the world. Uh, very recently, in the last quarter, in fact, on YouTube also, we have become the number one uh, bank among in the world with 4.98 lakh views. On the LinkedIn and on Pinterest, we have the highest number of followers across all Indian banks. At tw on Twitter, we are the second highest and so on the Instagram. The last slide actually gives a very clear picture. If you see the, uh, the varied awards that our bank has received, it is really clearly a recognition of all-round performance. Best bank of the year, by Business Today, our chairman, she got the India Business Leader Award of the Year by CNBC. Whether it is Trade Finance, whether it is Technology Award by IDRBT, whether it is in training, the Golden Peacock National Training Award, and whether it is the most prized, most precious award for us, which is the Helen Keller Award 2016, for second successive year for com commitment towards promoting equal employment opportunities for dif di differently abled persons. Uh, so I think that uh, ends my presentation and we can now ask que uh, answer questions, please. Yeah, we'll begin the question answer session now. Yeah, just a second, Aritu, just a second. We'll have the mics coming to you, just a couple of house announcements before we uh, begin the question. Request anybody who's interested in asking a question to raise their hands, the mic will come to you. 
uh, we'll just uh, kind of switch over between Bombay and Calcutta, give equal opportunities to both. So anyone interested in asking a question, please introduce yourself and then uh, in the interest of all, uh, ask the question and let's limit uh, particular two questions at a time for one person. We'll come back again uh, to the person. So anybody is interested in asking a question, please go ahead. Don't worry, we will take all questions. We'll get the mic okay. to you. Ritu, we'll get the mic to yeah, you. Yeah, please. Two questions at a time, please. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is Ritu Singh from CNBC. Uh, Ma'am, you said you've taken the maximum amount of pain in a quarter on, a align, uh, you know, on account of aligning your asset quality with those of the subsidiaries. And we've seen a significant improvement in asset quality as well in this quarter. Are we to assume then going forward now that you've already taken provisions and taken the hit, uh, this uh, addition to bad loans at least will not worsen from the current ratios? Mm -hmm. Well, we would hope so. Uh, you have to understand it's like this. Uh, FY18, we will still need to have slightly elevated credit costs because as we go forward with the resolutions, it will depend upon the amount of, uh, you know, provisions that we will need to make upfront. As of now, as you know, the stipulations are that all of the provisions will have to be taken upfront. Though we have asked for certain dispensation to spread it out across a few quarters, that is currently not available. And if it is not available, then obviously, you know, as we resolve, these uh, provisions will have to be made. Uh, it is because of that, actually speaking, we have done more than 1,600 crores of provision almost 1,700 crores of extra provision we have done over and above regulatory requirements in our NPA accounts, because of which, if you've seen, our PCR has gone to almost 66% coverage. Uh, and even without OCA, the PCR is in excess of 48% today. So to that extent, we really have improved on the amount of provisions we have kept, because we do expect that we will need to take some pains as we do the resolutions, okay? So to that extent, FY18 credit costs are not about to come down. However, FY19 should definitely be much, much better. Ma'am, could you throw some numbers for uh, taking from your uh, answer? No, I'm sorry, I cannot give you numbers. At this point of time, I can only tell you directionally how it All looks. Right. But directionally, as I said, the near term, there might be still a little more pain as we take these resolutions. Slightly longer term, things are definitely on the up, upswing. Just so we'll come back to the questions, please. Yeah. We'll have others asking the question. Next, Vishwana. Yeah. Uh, hi, ma'am. Vishwana yeah. here from Bloomberg Quinn. Yeah. Just uh, wanted to get some sense about the pace of resolutions that are happening or the discussions that are happening after the uh, government's announcement and after even after the RBI's involvement in the whole process. What are you seeing and what is your uh, expectation going ahead? Well, you know, our expectation, of course, was that the deep restructuring that we believe will need to be done and which doesn't really fit into any framework right now could be given some kind of a very, uh, what should I say, a general kind of a framework so that, you know, the OCs could also look at these particular resolutions. However, whether that happens or it doesn't happen, the fact of the matter is that the NCLT also is another way that is open to us. And the NCLT, um, entire operations in the NCLT is now beginning to gather a little more pace. So we believe that either way, either through the NCLT or through the RBI route, we will find some way in order to take these accounts forward and to resolve them. Again, remember one thing that many of these accounts are still operating. Some of them, especially in the steel sector and all, are operating at very high capacity utilization levels. And they do need support with working capital. But unless the resolutions take place, that is something that the banks are not able to uh, take care of. So to that extent, this is an area that is definitely going to be looked at very closely by the banks. And we expect that there will be more action in this area in the few months going forward. Right. Just to add to that, uh, going ahead, then what would be the impact on profit? Because, as you said, the provisions are not going to come down, your credit cost is not going to come down. But, you ahead. know, the impact on the profit will not be anything worse. Means I think the biggest impacts we have already taken. And whatever is the amounts that we are looking at, they should be, you know, perfectly within our uh, means to do. I don't think we are one of those banks that are looking for dispensations for spreading it out across quarters. 
we can still afford to do whatever we need within the quarter. We have that amount of uh, comfort. And frankly, at this point of time, you know, as I think Anshula mentioned, we have crossed one of the biggest Rubicons. That is, you know, today we have done more than 50,000 crores of uh, operating profit. That's a very large number. And this is on a solo basis. Now, to this, you will add whatever will be coming from the associate bank side. So I think we are quite capable of taking whatever is required. And I don't believe that it should be a matter of worry. Uh, we have a friend there. Please introduce yourself and then we can take the questions. Hello, ma'am. I'm Anku Gohar from BTVI. I have a question regarding the stressed asset area again, since we see the asset quality now improving. Uh, are you going to look into reducing exposure into a particular sector? Or would you like to highlight on which sector apparently is uh, the most stressed for that matter of fact? And how now the, with the RBI guidelines and resolution, you're going to move forward, look into it? Any particular sector for that matter, as you've also highlighted previously, that uh, most of it can be converted into working uh, asset. Most of the stress asset you, you had uh, once said that can be uh, converted into working asset going further. So any sector where the exposure would be reduced? You see, it's like this. At the end of the day, you know, the risk is micro, not macro. Okay, so overall what happens is when a sector is stressed, we try to ensure that in that particular sector, if we do take exposure, it's in the very, very strong players of that sector, or maybe in the PSU players of that sector, if they are supportable PSUs, okay? So I will not say that we will stop exposure altogether, but yes, if the sector is flagged as weak, definitely it is something that we will do after thinking a large number of times, and to the extent possible, we will not be taking exposures on those sectors. Okay. So currently, there's no such sector that you have uh, looked at or would be looking at? No, in for instance, time. you know, we are all aware, for instance, the telecom sector is, a, is an issue. So to that extent, that is a sector that we are very wary of. And I think so should anybody else be. Similarly, you know, there are other sectors as well. But again, as I said, the risk is micro and not macro. So you can't really say that I will wash my hands of this sector altogether and retreat out of it. Uh, for the next question, we'll just go to Bombay. I think Sangeeta from uh, Economic Times has a question in Bombay. Sangeeta, please go ahead. Can't hear you. Hello. Yeah, 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 you yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we can. can you hear? Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to know what is the divergence because the notice to the exchange says that it is not applicable for you all. The divergence on the... That is right. That it, is, is right. It, is, it is not applicable is not for us. Applicable as you know, we are expected to declare it if it is above 15%. Uh, ours is much less than that. So we do not need to declare anything. So, but could you share with us what could be the number line? No, I don't think it is required to be shared. So there is no reason why we should. Suffice it to say that, you know, our divergence is not above that level at all, so it is not required. It's not material. Please. Please introduce yourself. In a way, Sangeeta, I'm glad you asked that, because that at least indicates that whatever has been given to us, we have taken it up front, and we have taken it in due time. Uh, good evening. I'm one, Ria. One second. Just, just one a second, second. Just a Small data point to that: that basically the divergence could have happened in vis-a-vis -vis March 16. So, if you recall, in the fourth quarter of March 16, uh, we had uh, we, if I remember correctly, the slippages were around 30,000 crores in that one quarter alone out of which only one third remaining to be done from AQR. The two third slippages we had taken were uh, our decision to take and not driven by AQR. That is why we are not actually in this purview at all of divergence. Ma'am, please raise, uh, please ask questions and uh, introduce yourself. I am Ria from NDTV. I'd like to know what the SBI is doing to check any impact on recent cyber attack in view of reports about 70% of ATMs in India is an easy prey for cyber attacks. Uh, would Mrithinja, would you like to answer that question? I'll ask the CIO to answer that question.
Thank you. Uh, as a bank, uh, as you know, uh, we are, uh, we have to be ahead of the curve. So our uh, preparedness is twofold. First is putting together the technology to uh, prevent any kind of uh, malware or uh, cyber hacking to come inside our system to either disrupt our service or to steal our data. Second is that uh, we have always told that in this world it is very difficult to say that we are ready to prevent 100% of uh, cyber attack. So if an incident happens, how do we manage it? Uh, on the technology front, we have uh, probably the uh, only security operation center which is ISO compliant in this country. We have uh, put together a large number of qualified people. We have put together data and analytics for incident management. And at the same time, we have also a war room procedure that if something happens, how do we deal with it? And uh, last but not the least, we have built together a community in which we share the information, apart from reporting to the regulators and to the government's uh, cyber uh, emergency response team, we also share amongst each other to find out what are the trends and how in a community all the banks and financial institutions can work together. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, I have a question. I'm from um, ANI. Uh, the question is that the GST has been one of the key fa uh, things that has caught the attention of the market. How would you uh, comment on that? Well, uh, GST obviously should be one of the key themes because it is a very extensive tax reform. And to the extent that it is expected to really uh, contribute to the ease of doing business, uh, it is something that is very material and actually can add to the productivity of the GDP of a country. Uh, uh, to that extent, it is uh, a very seminal kind of a reform and obviously we expect to be part of it. Uh, regarding the payment system that will be required in order to accept these taxes, uh, SBI is ready. I think uh, the um, uh, testing with the GSTN is, has, uh, has it begun. It's already started. Uh, as for us internally, because we are also um, uh, givers of service, so to that extent, we will be also within the purview of GST and we will also have to pay uh, service tax and now the GST tax. So there are a lot of preparations that we have to do internally because as you know, the costing of services is much more difficult than that of goods. And especially if services uh, one stream of service is given across, say, two or three states. How do you ensure the, how much of it pertains to which state? So there are issues over there which we are working through. There has to be a lot of software deployment within the company also for this. And for that also we are uh, making our necessary preparations. So it's going to be a very big change. I'm sure that in the first few months or one or two quarters it will be very difficult. But hopefully, going forward, we will be able to manage the issues that crop up. Uh, we Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm yeah. Neha Bothra from ET Now. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, you spoke at length about stressed assets, but there's just one area that I want to understand a little better. Sure. As far as the watch list is concerned, for State Bank of India alone, it would stand at close to 13,300 crore. But once you add to it your associate banks, it goes up to over 32,000 odd crore rupees. I wanted to understand what kind of slippages do you expect going forward? You did speak at length about it, but if you could clarify what kind of slippages you anticipate going forward. You see, I can only tell you, Neha, in certain uh, qualitative terms. In the sense, last year, the watch list that we had given, this year we have refreshed it, okay? We have refreshed it out of this 32,000 crores of watch list that we have given. About 8,000 is uh, associate 9, banks. 9,800 pertains to associate banks. The rest is our own bank, okay? So wherever, for instance, wherever certain projects that were still under implementation last year and have since completed or are going to complete this year, and especially this is true of power assets, but they don't have PPAs, Assets of that nature now have also found its place in the watch list, okay? Now, this is the overall watch list of the entire entity that is around 32 to 33,000. What will be the slippage? Very difficult to give you any 
perfect number at this stage. One of the reasons, again, is that we would like to take this quarter to have a proper look at our associate bank's uh, uh, books as well. Though we have done that very well, I can promise you, but in spite of that, I think you know you should give us one quarter before trying to give any numbers regarding slippages. So only thing that I can tell you that it is slowing. It is definitely slowing, and if the resolutions come as we are, we are hoping they will, because today it is not only RBI, you know, it is many of the ministries that are working with us to resolve issues pertaining to the, those individual seg sectors. You have seen the steel ministry come up with a number of things. So it's similarly, we are talking to the power ministry, the mines ministry, the textile ministry. Each of the ministries, in fact, are putting, putting forth their requirements and rather asking for our requirements and the industry's requirements and trying to see what more needs to be done. Therefore, it is very difficult to give you any number for slippage. However, I can still tell you this much that directionally, we are definitely slowing down. Also, ma'am, you said that next quarter you'll be starting on a clean slate. Uh, Absolutely. Just to get an idea, how do you assess the impact following the merger on fee income, your capital needs going forward? You would have done some initial studies to get a preliminary understanding of how yeah. things will pan out. How do you think the impact will be going forward? See, on the capital front, we are actually quite, quite comfortable. Uh, capital front, I don't think we have uh, any uh, difficulties at all. And regarding the fee income and regarding our reach, and margins, uh, fee margins, income and margins. Okay. So on the, I would request then, you know, on the corporate side, maybe Shriram can make a comment. And then on the fee income side, and, um, the, I think I'll ask uh, Mr. Rajneesh to make a comment there. So this is on the, this thing, the merged entity. Well, actually, the corporate side, as we've said, you know, uh, the corporate in terms of growth, uh, we'll uh, about 60 to 70 percent of the corporate uh, lending of the associate banks are generally aligned to whatever we have in our uh, SBI. Uh, so, more or less, uh, the Wait, corporate sure. side has been taken care in terms of the merger uh, implications. As far as the alignment of the stressed assets go with the uh, uh, with the Associate banks, you would have seen, you know, last three quarters, we have tried uh, our best and probably today we are absolutely aligned to uh, the stressed asset situations, both uh, from the SBI to associate bank alignment uh, uh, side. Uh, on the growth uh, for prospects of the cross corporate, I think there are two uh, areas. One is, of course, the uh, typical loan growth, which you've seen that it is, uh, the SBI has grown by about uh, two plus percent. Uh, but largely, if you see, there has been a traction between, or rather shift from uh, the loan book to the markets. And uh, there has been close to 55,000 crores of market improving by, by way of CPs and, and CDs, uh, which don't reflect in the, uh, in the loan growth of corporates. Uh, there was a question earlier on uh, what are the sectors that we are looking at and uh, whether we are not, you know, uh, lending to some sectors. You see, largely we have been, uh, uh, you know, as, as I said, the growth itself is only about 2%. But if you see the sector wise uh, breakup, the large growth has come from uh, the services uh, sector and a uh, little bit on uh, uh, to public sector entities in the areas of infrastructure, power, and steel. But they are not much, they are only in the order of about three to 4,000 crores of growth. But the big uh, uh, push has come uh, in the in the area of services, where we had uh, uh, you know we were underexposed to some extent, and we have found that there was a big uh, opportunity for us to get into that sector, improve our exposure, and also uh, you know get exposure onto high-rated uh, corporates. Almost 83, 84 percent of our new sanctions in the corporate side have been A-rated and above. So to that extent, the health of the new uh, uh, disbursals and sanctions has been much, much better now. So overall, uh, the, as we go into the next year with the uh, backing of the associate banks, the important thing is that we will be covering the group exposure at a single entity and also the leveraging of whatever expenses were there in respect of corporate uh, uh, you know, uh, loans or corporate uh, book 
by way of cost cutting, you know, because there, if you have a single account, there'll be six relationship managers across uh, six uh, banks and each reporting to boards. All that expense is cut down and we'll have a greater uh, you know, handle on the, uh, on the individual accounts. All in all, I would imagine both growth-wise as well as quality or health-wise, there will be improvement as we go on. Would you like to talk about yeah. this? Yes. And as far as the retail piece is concerned, two things are going to happen. One is that we are going to have more feet on the street as a result of the optimization of the branch network as well as the administrative layers which were there and are there and there has been a considerable reduction. Uh, just one example is that uh, there were five corporate offices of these five banks. But uh, post-merger, we have created only two local head offices at Jaipur and Amravati. Second thing is that focus on cross-sell has been much better in State Bank of India as compared to the associate banks. So the customer base has gone up and the distribution reach is now much more stronger. The synergy which State Bank of India had with the non-banking subsidiaries, uh, that benefit now will flow to the all the branches and all the customers of the erstwhile associate banks. The target which we have now kept for the cross-sell as well as upsell, downsell, so uh, the the benefit uh, is going to be immense in this year, and uh, we have scaled up our targets as far as the uh, income from these initiatives is concerned. Uh, one thing you had asked about the CASA numbers, we have merged the CASA numbers. Uh, sorry, the uh, uh, capital adequacy numbers. Uh, we have merged those numbers for the first uh, of April. And there, you know, the overall number is 12.85 if you take the ABs. So uh, we ourselves are around 13.11. So to that extent, you know, it comes down to around 12.85. Tier 1 still remains at 10.05. So very healthy uh, Tier 1. The Government of India shareholding comes to around 60.75 if you do the merger as of uh, the way things stand right now. Okay. Yeah. We'll have a mic coming, but before uh, coming to your question. Combined PCR is 61.53. Okay. So, uh, ma'am, we'll go to the Bombay now. We have mm -hmm. Shayan from uh, Financial Express uh, who has a question, Bombay. Shayan, please go ahead. Shayan, please go ahead. And uh, uh, the combined above, uh, without Oka is above 45%. Okay. Shayan, please go ahead. Yeah. Ma'am, this regarding uh, the new RTI. Yeah. Uh, that lowered uh, the JLF uh, majority threshold to 50 and 60 percent. So, uh, following following that, what? Uh, how many loans? How many accounts do you think that are stuck because of uh, uh, you know unavailability of mandates are going to go through now? I couldn't get it. What was 60 percent and 50 percent for uh, JLF. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, see, very difficult to tell you how many will go through because of this 50 or 60. The fact of the matter is, uh, why was uh, this brought in? It was brought in because it was found that the many of the smaller banks, or maybe even one or two of the bigger banks, were dragging their feet when they, it came to giving a decision on the JLF. And therefore, it was decided, you know, that these matters needed quick action. Uh, like, you know, for instance, if you need antibiotics of 500 mg, now I give it to you over a period of five days instead of giving it to you in one shot, you are not going to get cured. So also in these cases, you know, if I keep giving you driblets, you are not going to actually, you know, come out of the situation that you are in. That is the reason why RBI brought in that particular um, JLF rule, that if the majority says that this is the way out, then everybody would either have to take a decisive action or they need to join in. They just cannot sit on the fence. But as a result of that, how many will get done? Uh, very difficult to say at this point of time. So, do we have a question yes. here? Anybody who has a question? Yeah. The, so One yeah. minute. He wanted to ask something else, I think. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Can please follow up question. Yeah. Is, is there a sense as to what amount of this, if not the number of accounts, if you could give something of that sort? 
on uh, these resolutions that could take place for this and uh, are the, is this guideline retrospective in nature or this will happen uh, be only for jlfs that happen after the guideline is effective no no they are there for all existing jlfs mm. and amounts would be difficult you know it would be difficult for us to tell the amount i don't think we have the number here so okay. request if you can introduce and then ask a question please this is atodip from economic times uh, i would like to know uh, uh, during the fourth quarter how much recovery you have done cash recovery how and much? recovery you have done recovery uh, in, yeah. in your npa management right and going forward what is the uh, outlook for recovery and whether you plan to sell any assets to years is given that changes in regulatory norms whether we'd like to do sell any assets to years is Oh, sell any assets to ARC. ARC sales fourth quarter was a very small number. Here, you give the number. We'll give you the number. Mm -hmm. And going forward, you know, ARC sale is always an option. But the fact of the matter is, you know, they must. Uh, we must uh, find it comfortable to sell to them at the valuations that they are indicating. If their valuations are very low, then we find it of uh, little use to uh, actually sell to them. so to that extent you know it becomes a difficulty regarding recovery i think this year the recovery has been 5197 crores in the uh, npaps and oka recovery has been 3477 crores arc sales has been very low it was only in q4 it has been about uh, uh, 597 crores so around 600 crores and for the full year it has been 1264 uh, we'll go to bombay bombay sorry but, uh, uh, full uh, year it is 794 crores so just one small point i want to add to that if you take the recoveries and upgrades in np account and you take the recovery in written off account uh, oka accounts of 3 and 1000 crores in the whole year we have done in excess of 12000 crores either upgrade or recovery and with a growth rate of more than 22 23% year on year so that also actually has speeded up quite a bit if you take the recovery the upgrade the recovery in oka all together it comes to around 12101 crore uh, sorry 12111 12, crores so to that extent you know that too we have sort of done about 22% more than the earlier year Uh, we'll take next question from Bombay Falak Naz from Financial Chronicle in Bombay. Falak, please go ahead. Related to what's your guidance on margins and uh, um, your outlook on deposited and credit growth? Out credit Out. growth. Credit growth. See, was that the question? Agent, what is your question? Can you repeat the question, Falak? Yeah. What's your guidance for margins and outlook on credit and deposit? see again uh, guidance on margin as you know we don't ever give a particular guidance on margin and neither do we want to give it this time uh, we have to understand what is it that is going to drive the margins at this point of time the reasons why the margins are impacted is because of the npa situation and our requirement to make uh, quite a bit of uh, provisions there going forward um, again as i said in fy18 the issue will remain that credit cost will remain elevated because we are still trying uh, to uh, do certain amount of um, resolutions so in the near term there will be a downward pressure because of this however one thing is sure that as the resolutions happen the cost there will become better and secondly one other upward uh, uh, movement we should get as the funds that are there with the abs that is the erstwhile associate banks deposits as they get repriced into our deposits there will be some amount of positive impact coming from that because as you know the associate banks deposits were priced at a rate higher than ours so to that extent you know there will be a two way pressure one a little downward the other upward so to that extent i believe you know more or less we should be able to keep a stable kind of a uh, outlook on the uh, net interest margins and i just want to add yeah. one small point to that yeah. see today we have about today more than 5 to 6% percent excess slr which is uh, you know deployed all in gsec where we get a return of between 6% and 6 and 1/2% to 7% 
as credit growth is picking up and it is moving into the loan book we get an immediate upside of at least 2 percentage points plus even at the reduced home loan rate that we have on affordable housing it is at above 8 percent 8.35 percent so as loan growth picks up surely we will see improvement in our margins going forward uh, just if you have any questions from you please request to raise hand before we take one more question from bombay uh, bijoy from uh, kujanshi has a question in bombay Hi, ma'am. Um, a couple of quick uh, guidance questions. Uh, any any outlook on non-core asset sales and how much we'll look at uh, raising? Also on repatriation, whether there is any guidance for FI 18? No repatriation in any case there isn't, and that cannot go through the PNL. I think as per the recent RBI guidelines, so repatriation will have little impact. in respect of other non core asset sales well as you are aware that we have already determined to um, ipo the sbi life so that is something that should happen during the year the dial up in respect of the general insurance is currently under process uh, it will depend on uh, what the valuations work out to to see whether the jv partner will actually then go ahead or not so there is not very clear clarity on that but that is something that is likely that is possible something that can happen these are the two major ones uh, over and above this you know there is always uh, the uh, our investment into uti asset management that is also something that's being discussed so that is another possible area where we may um, if it lists if it uh, goes for an ipo that is one other area where we we may dilute our um offer our uh, share some amount of our share for sale so the, these are the two or three major things other than that of course we have some amount of strategic investments in various companies so we may may do some amount of sales there as well uh, do we have a question any of your subsidies need yeah. pardon any of your subsidies need any capital in this uh, current financial year oh no i don't really think there is is there any people, huh? no there is there is no requirement this year from any of the subsidiaries do we have a question if in kolkata however so one thing is we will be raising our stake in uh, sbi cards we have already advised that and that is something that will happen during the year sir request if you can introduce yourself yeah, and sorry uh, my name is abhishek uh, i just had a couple of questions one is when you talk about strategic uh, investments or how much is the stake you are going to raise in sbi cards at the other fundraising options across your subsidiaries and investments and to any numbers on demonetization deposits and the break up of them in 500 and 1000 rupees okay. abhishek if you can introduce your organization please uh, sorry i'm from hindu business line okay yeah as far as sb card is concerned we are having two companies there one is the front end company the other is a back end company in uh, in the front end company we had a stake of 60% that we are increasing to 74% and then the back end company we had a stake of 40% which will be increasing to 74% so put together uh, we had a combined share of about 55 56% so that will go up to 74% do we have any more questions yes, i also asked on demonetization ah this is the number demonetization during that period the growth was 165327 crores of which savings bank was 124000 uh, current account was 35000 and fixed deposit was 5000 okay 165327 during that period pardon i can't hear you oh i don't i don't have that and uh, around 65% of that uh, amount still remains in the system okay it's not been drawn yeah uh, we have manojit asking question uh, ma'am uh, hi uh, manojit from the hindu yeah uh, what is the floating provision you have now acha for or the standard asset no floating provision or contingency reserve whatever you can say that Floating provision. We well, we have one thousand one hundred forty nine crores as counter cyclical provision buffer, and we have also made, which is not called a floating provisions, provision for some stressed standard assets in our book, which is at five thousand nine hundred ten crores. Five thousand nine hundred ten crores. That's, That's right. right. So what is that provision called? That is for stressed standard assets. 
we have the standard made assets that we have which made. we believe may have some issues may have weaknesses or are displaying weaknesses so we have proactively provided for them to the extent of 5000 910 crores so these are not restructured assets no 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 these are not restructured assets this is over and above our pcr right okay no they may be restructured assets standard restructured okay standard restructured normally attracts a 5% provision right right these are over and above that over and above 5% that's so right it's about 5900 crore that's right and floating provision is 1400 crore that's 1140 crores 1100 that is counter cyclical counter cyclical You That's said right. that uh, uh, you're looking for some dispensation to amortize the provision for the next few quarters. What is the amount, ma'am? I want to mm, know that. There is no amount. See, this is an industry issue. This is not a SBI issue. What the industry had asked for is just like you know, if you remember when we did ARC sales three years back, right? And the uh, people were being faced with valuations that left them with the requirement for making upfront lump sum provisions. Okay. Right. so the feeling is that when you go for these resolutions you will face the same issue and therefore the industry as such is asking that give us a few quarters to make these provisions when we do the resolution if i do a resolution of account a today and the amount that i can resolve is say x and the amount that is on your books is y then y minus x whatever is the amount you'll need to provide today okay right. so instead of doing that they are saying give us a few quarters so that we can spread it out okay but this is not an issue with us and this is not anything to do particularly with us neither is this amount known right okay? right and finally last thing the fresh slippages in q4 was about 9700 odd crores that's so right. what is the run rate ma'am i mean do you think it is coming see i as i said i can only give you some qualitative comments on this and that is it appears to be slowing okay thank next, you next thank question will take from bombay uh, see, before if we... you look at if you look at the stress uh, the, the watch list that we have given as a percentage of the book last time's watch list was around 2.3% of our corporate book okay this time watch list is around 1.6% of the combined book of us and the other six banks so obviously from that itself you can make out that directionally it is lower okay next question is from bombay beena from money control okay uh, sir ma'am uh, could you tell us what is your total non core asset uh, uh, valuation and uh, also on the brs expenses you mentioned that 75% of the estimated expenses have been provided for what is that amount as well uh, uh. the vrs actually as you know there is a vrs that we have uh, we have uh, uh, given to the um, uh, employees of our erstwhile associate banks around 3600 people have opted for the same and to that extent there is an expense over there that uh, we will incur the expense is not expected to cross uh, around uh, 400 and Uh, 80 crores on the outside, maybe maximum 500 crores. So, to the extent of around 75 percent of that, we have already provided. Uh, we had one question here, uh, sir. If you can just introduce yourself. Yeah, please. My name is Onika. I work with the Mint newspaper. She had one more question. Abhinay, what was the other question? question? Yeah, what is strategic investment? Can you repeat, Bina, please? Okay. Non-core assets valuation? No, no. For the non-core assets, total valuation we do not have. We don't have. Ah, okay. Sir, please, please introduce yourself. My name is Onik. I work with Mint newspaper. Very recently, we saw State Bank take a very proactive step in inter inter interfering in the management of a company which had not yet defaulted. It changed the chairman because the chairman's attitude was found to be not in the, in the best interest of the company. So I I can't think of any other bank or any other instance of of a bank directly interfering in the management even before the loan has turned uh, NPA. Are you looking at more such interventions? If there are other ways to intervene, take corrective steps like you did in this case. Without naming names, I'm not even asking you to name See, names. See again, I don't want to discuss any particular account, but let yeah. me tell you this much: that if there is total non-cooperation with the banks, then it doesn't really work. 
whether you are NPA or not an NPA, at the end of the day, there are certain things that the bank requires. And when we actually give certain facilities to anybody, it is after due uh, negotiation with that particular uh, borrowing entity. And then after that, if the borrowing entity doesn't make good their commitments, and not for some external reasons, sometimes the commitments are not made good because there are external reasons for it. But if there are no external reasons and still the commitments are not made good, then yes, we will take precipitate action as can be uh, done. Also, believe me that where a board is very, very independent and good, there the boards are also, you know, they are cooperating with us in order to ensure better governance standards in companies. So I think, you know, I'm not saying that this is going to happen every time. But it will depend from case to case. And if it is required in the interest of the organization and in the interest of the bank as well as a lender, I think we are fully within our rights to consider such issues. We can have one question from there. Uh, please introduce yourself. I'm uh, uh, Prakash Priyadashi from Z Business. Uh, how helpful, uh, helpful will be the ordinance to tackle the NPAs? And uh, has bank decided uh, any accounts to go for haircut? No, see, you know, you can't just decide on an account to take it for a haircut. It all depends upon the process. There is a process for resolution, okay? As you go for the resolution, you have to see what are the uh, possibilities, what are the, um, the possible solutions, and which solution appears to be better. And the fact of the matter is that if the solutions that are coming up are such that demand this, then yes, we will consider it. I am not saying we will not consider it. But neither am I saying that I will start with that for every account. It all depends from account to account. Every solution is different. Every one of these large accounts have different issues and therefore have to be looked at differently. Okay? okay. And regarding the ordinance, how helpful it will be, Frankly, the ordinance has been given to the regulator, okay? Now, it depends upon what the regulator comes out with to determine how helpful it will be. For instance, the day the ordinance came, the regulator came with certain things regarding the JLF. And those uh, regulations are definitely going to help uh, the industry as well as the banking community. So, if they come up with more of these things, it will be more helpful. But it, we have to boy, wait to see what more comes to determine how helpful it can be. We'll have the last two questions, one from Bombay and one from Calcutta. Uh, first, we'll take Bombay. Mayur from Times of India in Bombay. Uh, uh, my question was on uh, last year, uh, a third of your loan growth came from Hauteng. So what do you expect this year, considering that uh, there is the Prime Minister, the Vasi Yojana, which is a deeper affordable housing? Third of your loan growth now see, today the, the, the retail, the P segment retail, that is housing, auto and other P segment loans. In our other P segment loans, by the way, we don't have credit card loans. Huh? These are loans normally given to the salary account holders in our bank. Now, these three together form about 30% of our domestic book. Uh, regarding Prime Minister's Aadhaar, uh, sorry, Avas Yojana, this is actually a scheme that we feel will be something that we can get a lot of traction on. As you know, we have already uh, entered into a MOU with Credi in order to support not only the home buyers under PMAY, but also the builders under PMAY. So we feel this is an enormous opportunity. The scheme as such is very well structured because as you know, the home buyers will be able to get the subsidy upfront. So it's a very well structured scheme. It is an attractive scheme. And to that extent, there is a lot of, um, a lot of um, enthusiasm even amongst the builders because they feel this is something that is definitely going to sell. So yes, we do believe that we will get a lot of, um, uh, of uh, action and a lot of business out of this. Now exact numbers, again, I'm not in a position to give you any indicators, but definitely this is going to be one of our focus areas going forward. Also, can you elaborate on the sustainability report that you spoke about earlier? You want what on the sustainability report? Elaborate. Okay. So, you know, uh, again, as you know that uh, most of the uh, banks internationally or large corporations, 
they have certain um, certain uh, norms that they follow internally as to how to ensure that the environment you work in that you leave it the way you found it that is you leave it for future generations also to use so how do you minimize the use of resources or ensure more recycling more renewable energy usage less carbon footprint so there are a whole host of these things that we are addressing within the bank in fact we are also in the process of finding out whether we can set up a department that will assess the impact on the environment for all the lending that we do so that is also in the works so towards this end last year actually we did bring out a report but that report was not brought out on the gri standards gri are the international standards for this report this year therefore we have come with a full fledged uh, sustainability report this will now become a standard feature uh, yearly at the time when we give our annual report this report also will be uh, another of those reports that come along with the annual report We'll take one last question from Bombay, uh, Devangi. Uh, um, yeah, hi ma'am. Uh, I wanted some uh, understanding from you on, uh, you know, how large credit repairs could uh, because when I look at the details, it looks like uh, sequentially, while uh, other segments there has been, uh, you know, some moderation in the ratio. Large corporate is something where you know there has been an uptake, and after the new watch list uh, number that you have given. Uh, with the associate bank so the number looks big i mean the cost number is 2000 uh, or number so can we expect the large corporate uh, to just to remain high could really get the question can you repeat the question devangi your voice is little breaking uh, the voice is coming broken actually so we are not really able to can understand you repeat the question are you asking whether you we are expecting the large corporate slippage to moderate is that the question yeah, I am just asking what is the trend likely to be because uh, la in the last part, la by other segments there has what been a moderation like in that, large it, uh, you know, there has been an uptick. Okay, okay. And now the watch list is big with power okay. exposure somewhere around level. Okay, sure. Actually, the large corporate, if you see most of the watch list, uh, uh, is composed of large and medium cor uh, mid corporates and in that sense whatever slips as part of that is added in the last quarter we did have a couple of uh, slippages which added to the uh, you know uh, overall 9700 crores which came uh, significantly from the large corporates now uh, going forward I, we've uh, done this analysis we have given a, a watch list of 32400 crores of which again you know there are concerns on some of these corporates groups which are uh, highly leveraged and uh, would, we have uh, kept them on the watch list there is out of that 32000 close to about 19000 crores is uh, is out of the large corporate size and that is why there is no uncertain certainty on the way the slippage will happen or whether whether at all it will happen because these are groups who have sustainability to um, uh, to continue operations in a in a profitable way uh, however they also are uh, you know stressed they are also dependent on various ways in which the economy either corrects itself or uh, or doesn't and in that sense while they are stressed and they have kept we have kept them in the uh, in the watch list uh, we are uh, in directionally as such as far as as compared to last year as the chairman said uh, we will uh, we are seeing a moderation but uh, obviously you know their large corporates are the ones that have uh, that are still to bear the uh, you know the, the last few corporates which are there they are still there in the watch list uh, typically in the whole cycle what happens is that the smaller ones the smaller corporates who have sh uh, shallow pockets <coughs> they fall first and it's the de ones which have deep pockets and are <clears throat> available and uh, for whom funds are available uh, they are able to sustain it a little longer and that is how the larger corporates have sustained it over the last two three years but uh, we'll have to wait and see how it pans out this year uh, thank you ma'am thank you last so much we'll, uh, we'll have to wind up we'll take that offline uh, we'll take that question offline uh, as senior management is around uh, thank you all for participating hello we'll just wind up here Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody has a question can take it offline, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, everybody, for participating.